Welcome to the Nutri Medical Report, and we shall be joined shortly with IQ Al Razuli. Uh, IQ, are you there? Looks like he's not here yet. Uh, so we will. Uh, I guess it's been an interesting day. We've had a bunch of uh, guests that have not been able to make it, but we have lots of news to cover. So I don't think there'll be any shortage of topics. Want we'll to open it to open lines and eight hundred two five nine five seven nine one eight hundred two five nine five seven nine one. Eight hundred two five nine five seven nine one. The um, interesting uh, thing. Let's go over some of the world news issues right now. We have uh, Mikhail uh, Shakashvili, uh, of course, uh, lost his election to a billionaire who was uh, actually an outsider who came in and took over uh, Georgia, who was very fam- friendly with the Russians. Uh, Shakashvili was basically not cooperating. The area of Sosetia has had a lining up of Russian troops. They're literally ready to to leave. Uh, uh, Georgia, which is almost certain the Rokai Tunnel and the Sosasetians actually control the oil that comes out of the Caspian Sea. So to get a further move by Russia to further exert its authority in the area, the election, therefore, and the downfall of Shakashvili is very expected. Uh, the next story that's kind of interesting is uh, Venezuelan president faces first real threat. Uh, Enrique Capriles is a skinny marathon runner and opposition governor who has done something no Venezuelan politician has managed in the past 14 years to pose a threat. Uh, so it looks like uh, uh, Hugo Chavez it may be his last stand in terms of Chavez. Of course, he's fighting cancer as well as now this new political threat. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Venezuela sits on eight times at least the oil of Saudi Arabia, and, of course, it's within the sphere of influence. Hugo Chavez endorses Obama as well, by the way. Presidential nominee doesn't want to be endorsed by a foreign dictator. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez endorsed President Obama, saying in an interview, if, we were, if I were in America, I'd vote for Obama. I guess <laughs> that may not be a very good endorsement. That's kind of uh, actually pretty funny. Uh, the polls, Obama versus Romney, race very close. Castro and Chavez endorse Obama. So it looks like the co-communists of Castro and Chavez are endorsing the communists here in America. That's not surprising, is it? Um, Syria. The latest news, of course, has fallen off the uh, target. Turkey hits back after Syrian shelling. Syria war rages on. The Kurdish groups in a remote area near Turkey and Iraq have taken control. So it could have huge consequences for Syria's neighbors who have long suppressed Kurdish populations. Uh, what's happening is that the area of northern Iraq, which is basically the nidus for Kurdistan, has lots of oil and now money for military support. Uh, the area of Syria has given free harbor to the uh, Kurdish forces that are attacking now southeastern Turkey. So uh, Mr. Erdogan and the Turks, who are acting as a proxy for NATO, have made a very fatal decision, which is to attack Syria. And the Syrians have released the Kurds and given them free harbor inside the ter- Syrian territory to attack Syria, so to, to attack Turkey. So Turkey is really going to lose a chunk of territory that will become part of Kurdistan, which is a new oil empire, many times more oil than Saudi Arabia, directly allied with Iran. So the real issue is it's another oil war. And uh, this grew out of, by the way, or, uh, the war of uh, Iraq War number 1 and 2, which further proved that there was more oil in northern Iraq, which is the area we call Kurdistan. And the Kurds have suffered gravely under Saddam Hussein and gravely under the Turks. We have a caller. Your uh, question and your name is? My name is Jason. Jason, go ahead with your question and comment. Well, I'll tell you, uh, this, uh, this is an honor to just be on the line with you, Dr. Bill. You recently answered one of my things about I'm the loose skin guy, so thank you for all the protocol. So very good, very good. And, of course, if you give that time, it will help your body kind of respond. Remember now, it's your body trying to remodel. You're always remodeling your tissues of your body all the time. And right. if you add the power of ones, oxygen, Nutrimeds, energetic technology, including Vibra Slim, and stem cell therapies like like uh, Collagen Max Mountain Red Velvet, which is a scaffolding, and I'm going to put up a lot of literature on the scaffolding effect of Mountain Red Velvet, uh, energetic technologies like Metathera and PMT, the body will remodel it. And uh, you just have to give it time. You can't be a negative nitrogen balance, i.e. you can't be starving, you have to have all the building blocks so the connective tissues can rebuild and pull that and tighten that skin in. So there's no reason why it can't snap back. Understood. Gotcha. Gotcha. <clears throat> all right. Well, I don't want to take any, I don't want to take too much of your time. I just wanted to, yeah. but, you know, I believe you're a true prophet. I really, really believe that. And, you know, you got a lot of those Christian, so-called Christian scoffers out there saying, ah, Deagle's a nut. He's been on 
uh, you know, Project Camelot. He he just thinks that Jesus. Well, uh, Jesus went to, to and so did the uh, people like uh, Matthew. They spoke to the tax collectors. Uh, let, yeah. Let's get into that issue a bit here, so people will understand where I'm coming from. I'm a Messianic Christian. Uh, I believe in Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus. Our, our family on my mother's side were uh, were Cohen's, the Cohen Gadol, who was the end Cohen of the. Uh, that, that followed Jesus in the first century and was given a prophecy written down and passed through to my great uncle who died 25 plus years ago. Um, Michael Naima is his name, N E I M A, if you want to check it. The name Naima goes back to uh, my ancestor, who was a, a son of Aaron and, and uh, Moses, who actually, when the Assyrians cast him off to northern Iran, to the area of Kurdistan, to uh, Eshfahan, which is northern Iran. They, he married uh, the daughter of the king of the Medes and took on the name of the tribe called the Niami. And when they returned to the temple uh, that was built after Darius uh, the Persian actually gave the order to reorder it, they returned as the Naimas, N-E-I-M-A, and they served in the temple uh, until the time uh, with Herod Agrippa that Jesus came and my ancestor became a believer. Uh, he was received a prophecy that was passed on uh, almost 2,000 years older than the oldest printed Bible in writing to my great uncle that one in the family would be the witness to the northern tribes to the, to the descendants of Joseph and Ephraim which would be wow. the witness of Ephraim and my great uncle Ronald thought he was the one who was called to do that he got struck with blindness traveling across the country about 50 years ago doing ministry he was actually traveling all over the country I think he was struck when he was traveling through Las Vegas and uh, uh, his son uh, was also a believer, of course, a good friend of mine, went to medical school with me. His name is David Nama. He's probably retired now. He's an ophthalmology surgeon. He went into eye surgery uh, because of his father's blindness. Uh, but the family knows this well. My great uncle told me this when I was 14. He didn't have any children. He was a very wealthy man. He owned jewelry stores across eastern Canada. And the family were all basically jewelers and gemologists and chronographers who would build navigation instruments. And he came here, my great grandfather back in the 1890s he was born in 1852 David Naima uh, David if you want to call it in the Middle East uh, uh, my story if people know the whole story is very different uh, if they know the good and the bad and the ugly about Dr. Deagle uh, I am truly saved by the power and the grace of the Most High God and uh, that's why the church should be a place of an intensive care for those people who are continually sinners even those who are quote saved and you have to continually return to the Most High God Amen. what people should understand is salvation is for today heaven is today hell is today not not the moment of death <clears throat> and then what we're facing here now is a is a time of great trouble yeah. uh, as I've said before uh, my name and my is is called in Hebrew there's four letters you say receiving a white stone is keeper of the way slayer of the dragons and Amen. I am the witness of Ephraim now people may say well you didn't go to the school of the prophets you haven't gone through a seminary you haven't gone through. I went to the seminary of the tribulation and the witness of the Most High God and Amen. I don't do this because I think I'm a great person. I'm an obedient person. I hear the voice of God and I do it. I shema. I hear and do. And I don't know a lot of Hebrew or Greek. I know as much of the scriptures as God disciplines me. And he commanded me 24 years ago to write Clay and Iron, which I wrote, and Abortion to Armageddon, which I released 13 years ago with the Prophecy Club. I donated all of those books and prophets to the Prophecy Club to their radio and television and their ministry. Uh, and uh, I will be re-releasing the first of a trilogy of books called uh, Clay and Iron, The Time of Sorrows, will be coming out very soon. A, an updated version of Abortion to Armageddon, because remember now when the debate starts tonight, the real issue comes down to this, the sanctity of life. And the real issue is we have a frankly abortionist, Obama, and we have one who is a flip Hananiah prophet, Romney, who has stericycle on the other side. So, Dr. Bill, I just, wanted, I just wanted to ask you one thing. How stay right there, and we'll keep you on the line until we get our IQ Al Razuli calling in from the UK. Stay right there. Don't go away. If you have questions, we're going to expand this a bit because we're getting very close to the time of trouble. back and uh, it's interesting we don't have IQ Al-Razuli. I just wanted to repeat what we talked about on the break. Again, your full name again is? 
My name is Jason William Egroff. Okay, wonderful. Jason, now you have a, a news service called, uh, I think it's called Revelation News, is that right? Uh, yeah, wow, well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, right, at revelationnews.com, and I think you're launching a radio show. Where are you going to launch it? it it's it's uh, revelationnews.net, actually, because .com was taken. .net, okay, revelationnews.net. Now, we want to inspire young people to take the fire from the throne room of heaven. Now, here's the facts. And I tell people... It's okay to be skeptical. Keep your skepticals on. If you listen to anything I say or anybody that listens, or don't take it out of context. You have to listen to all the shows. Amen. And as I tell people, I only talk about 10% of what I know or what I'm even permitted to talk about. But things are going to be unveiled shortly. Now, they need to know that there is a witness that will be a Torah Jew, the first witness that will believe in Messiah HaMashiach. That witness is coming. I don't know who it is, but he's coming. They say they will have power to shut heaven so that there will be no rain. They're not talking about rain in terms of physical rain. They're talking about the rain of the Holy Spirit giving the truth to the people. So all these people that are saying that they, they scoff at Dr. Deagle, they don't offend me personally because I'm well beyond that. What they do, though, is they do what's called the sin of Cain. And it's the most vile sin you can do before judgment falls on a nation is to attack the prophets. Amen to that. Now, it's more vile than mass murder or killing the unborn, and I'll tell you why. Because if you give, God gives a way for a pathway for a nation to survive judgment. And as Jesus said, they kill the prophets between the brazen labor and the Holy of Holies, the high priest. What he's saying is, when I send you a witness to give you a pathway to avoid judgment, and you actually kill them by firstly dissuading other people from doing two things checking out the facts themselves and then going off quietly and fasting and praying and finding out if it's true because if it's not true just dispense with it you don't have to believe me i don't get offended but i do want people to do two things check out the facts themselves and go off and pray those two witnesses their intellect because i don't tell them to leave their brain at the door i ask them to check out the facts and i want them to go off and pray and find out if it's true now, a lot of people say, well, he just sells vitamins and so on. No, I sell the best nutraceuticals in the world. I have a special gift to help people. I have a medical discernment that God's given me, the supernatural gift 30 years ago that allows me to know what's wrong with people, even if they're 10,000 miles away. And, he, and God does this, not me. I'm a good doctor. I'm better than most. But God is infinitely knowledgeable. Now, people need to understand this. God wants to heal the physical bodies of mankind in the dying world. We've seen the peak of what it is for human biology. We are now, since the Second World War, all poisoned with radiation. We're now poisoned with 29 radiation release incidents that are major ones around the world. In fact, I was talking to Dr. Apsley the other day that wrote a book about, about Fukushima. 29 major incidents that nobody even knows about. When I was down working in Savannah, Georgia in 1987-88, they told me they had a major incident the year before in 86 from Savannah, which is a plutonium detonator plant for making our nuclear warhead detonators. And it was so bad that they even had where this radiation cloud fell on the immediately fell on the cars in the parking lot, they actually had to dig a hole because they couldn't transport them and actually dig a hole and drop them into this hole and concrete cap it off. And they told us if there's any incidents, don't tell anybody because we have radiation suits for you in the emergency department at the Augusta Regional Trauma Center. Don't talk to media. People don't know. When I was a doctor for under Reserve Admiral John Hughes at Rocky Mountain Ock Med, and I was the next down from the commander, they were moving radioactive liquid nuclear waste that was 10 million times more radioactive than they were even permitted by U.S. government laws and the Superfund Act to even move on the freeways. And one state trooper pulled out and asked for the bell of lading and radiation detectors and had to turn around and put them up Highway 93. That was in 1997. These incidents happen all the time. And people have no idea that every single nuclear reactor is releasing tritium. They're all dangerous as hell, like the Diablo Canyon sitting on three fault lines on a literally Indian burial ground, which is another abomination. And the San Jacinta fault sign zone, literally here in San Onofre, because God commanded me to, be, to move here to Southern California to this house. He showed me supernaturally the home before I moved here. Now people say, that can't be. Someone like Deagle can't exist in this day and age. Well, guess what? I'm not a wonderful person. I'm just an obedient person, period. So if people want to spit on me, I'm a man of spittle. I do not care how much people hate me because I've, I've been told that I will be one of the most hated people that ever existed in history. And I am not think that's wonderful. 
it makes me grieve because when they don't listen, when I tell them how close we are to the time of judgment of this planet and this people and this nation, when I grieve because it is a vile thing to kill mass murder people and it is a vile thing to kill the unborn, but it is even more vile, the sin of Cain, when so-called believers think that they have the right not just to be skeptical, but to spit and to actually call down and curse those who literally try to warn them of how dangerous things are and how close we are to annihilation. Absolutely. That's that, dangerous. That, that makes bad. me grieve. It literally makes me cry. I, in the last month, I've had, I literally, a week and a half ago, I had to beg God to please don't send me any more visions because I was grieving and having these standing visions that were so painful and so scary and so overwhelming, I thought I was going to die. Yeah. The one of the ones, a month ago, I was standing in my pool. For 20 minutes, I had a standing vision that I was standing in an area of Tehran on a street with buildings around anywhere from four to ten stories. And I was told it was in the area of a university right beside a military base in Tehran. And they were dropping these thermobaric bombs, and there were men and women and children literally with their lungs being sucked right through their mouth. And I was participating in feeling the death and destruction and the screaming and the terror as that was happening. And this is what people like Obama and even Romney are conspiring. And that's why they let in Benghazi this so-called ambassador, who, by the way, was also not a guy with blood on his hands. They just knew he was a brown shirt because he did a lot of their bad, dirty deeds, and the dirty deeds were getting out. They don't want to hear the words of a prophet because, you see, just like in the Old Testament, Jesus said, You, O Jerusalem, though I wish I could gather you like chicks, you who kill the prophets between the brazen labor and the holy of holies, you, O Israel. And, of course, when he saw the fig tree, he, he walked toward it expecting okay. he was going to get some figs. And guess what? There was no figs. So before the next sundown, that tree was dying because the state of Israel is on its deathbed because it was raised with communists, Sabbatean Satanists, and devils. That's, That's right. what it is. That's right. And yeah, there's a small little mustard seed of Torah Jews and Christians and, and Messianic believers. Many of them were former Russian or Diaspora Jews or even the Falasha Jews who are black Ethiopians, the descendants of King Menelik, uh, literally. Remember King Menelik from Ethiopia? Yep. yep. Right? They believe in Messiah HaMashiach, but the Jews, they say, oh, it's so disgusting. They're the lowest of the low Jews because they do all the Jewish sacrifices in the High Holy Days, but they believe in this... Literally, this is how evil it is. They believe that Jesus was the illegitimate son of a Roman soldier that raped this young girl. Yeah. That's what they say. And you know what? Right around the, the, the Mosque of Omar, you know, on the Temple Mount, in Islamic, written in Islamic script, right around the stone of Abraham where he was going to sacrifice Isaac, the Muslims have actually written in script that Jesus is an illegitimate bastard, the son of a Roman soldier. It's written right there and has been there for many centuries. So people think that Islam is wonderful. Let me tell you, there's lots of Satanists of various different brands, including Sabbatean Jews and Islam. But we are in vile judgment, and God is not happy. Things are going to happen real soon. Welcome back, and uh, if you want to call in 800-259-5791, uh, you know, get a little worked up because that's the spirit of the Most High uh, kind of stirring me up to say, you know, don't tolerate this. Yeah. And, it's not, and I do it because I love people, but I don't tolerate ignorance. I don't give quarter to stupidity and arrogance. And the most vile sin, the most vile sin on earth you can do is the sin of Cain. Now remember, here's the sin of Cain. It's just to explain Cain and Abel. And God put these in the Bible so you'd understand the purposes. You know, they say that the when they took the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it was a piece of fruit. No, it wasn't. It was deciding for yourself that you could decide what would good or evil, not in prayer by consulting the spirit of the Most High God, because the spirit in you is not a separate spirit. It is God. Amen. The portion of you, when you're the spirit of God, and your soul fuses into one being in, in terms of will, the marriage has occurred. The marriage supper occurs when you die. Right. That's important to understand that. When you become, your will is totally fused, and literally you are married, and you're fused to the spirit and the will and the and the intent of the most high. Ah, we have IQ Al-Razuli. Wonderful. Um 
Thank you for calling, and I really appreciate it. We want to get you back on to talk about your new service. IQ Al Razuli, tell us about what's going on. We were kind of talking about some of the issues dealing with uh, the evil of Islam uh, and the evil of the Sabbatean Jews in Israel and their in, in crazy intent that we're going to talk about in the selection that's coming up November 6th, where both of these crazy candidates are backing an attack that will probably precipitate a regional war. Uh, rather than surgically trying to kind of neutralize the weapon systems and neutralize Islam and its growth across Europe and America, we're never dealing with any of these issues. We've got secular pluralism, the idea that, oh, we can't prevent them from having their religion in America, even though they're teaching Sharia law and uh, these other things. Tell us all about it, IQ. What, what's happening and how close are we to the, the collapse of Western civilization caused by not only the growth of evil from Sabbatean Jews, but from Islam in all of its forms. People say, well, there's a moderate Islamic, and there's so on and so on. It's all a pile of garbage, isn't it? It is a pile of garbage. I would like to apologize to you for not calling earlier. I, but I had no, that's okay. You know, God about. had an intention for me to go on a rant, and I did. I went on a what I call a prophetic rant that people needed to hear because sometimes people say, well, he's Dr. Deagle. He teaches in the Academy of Anti-Aging Environmental Medicine. We think he's pretty smart, but he must be nuts. And there's no way that he's a real prophet of the Most High God. And I have to say to the people out there, God cares for you enough to send you one as a witness before the time of the end, and we're there. If you don't I think we're closer you, than the like time of the American Bay of Pigs or the Second World War, must learn to understand. Yeah, they must learn to understand, especially of the male followers of Muhammad, who consider yeah. Muhammad the most perfect male that has ever been created to be fully emulated in deed and thought. Let me share with you the following Tell us all about it, yeah. facts from their own scripture, which will hopefully explain to you the source of their evil and vile character. I'm yes. going to quote from their own scripture. Sahih al-Bukhari, al-Bukhari was one of the greatest exegetes in Islam, and he is followed by Muslims for the last 1400 years. Sahih al-Bukhari 4.73, he says, Allah's Apostle Muhammad said, know that paradise is under the shade of swords. Oh my I want gosh. the Americans to understand what I'm talking about. The shade of swords. In other words, the two cross scimitars, paradise occurs under that and only by it through jihad, which is by the blood of your enemies, anyone who does not submit to Islam, which means submission. What do you need me for? You're doing a good job. You're doing a great job. That is exactly Continue, what you mean. continue. Where's the tag team? Yeah. You see, I've tagged your hand. You go back out there and put them in a headlock and put them unconscious. Absolutely right. Bukhari Hadith 4.220. Allah's Apostle Muhammad said, I have been made victorious with terror. That is why his followers 14, for the last 1400 years have been doing this exactly the same thing. They have been terrorizing any human being who is not a Muhammad, follower of Muhammad, who is not a Muslim. It doesn't matter if they are Jews, Christians, Buddhists, Hindus. It makes absolutely no difference. I want the Americans to understand that Obama single-handedly has brought Islam and Islamism and the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda to power in the last four years of his dominance. Yeah, in fact, it's his, it's his entire purpose, including the death of the Benghazi ambassador who collaborated with Al-Qaeda, who collaborated with these 17 tribal uh, leaders of Salafi Islam and extremism, that the reason why he's dead is because he's a brown shirt and the, the night of the long knives has already started. It's, it's been, well, it started 1,400 years ago with Muhammad. Right, but it started with, with Obama's regime now, and that's why they're, that's why they're trying to cover it up. The Americans who are listening, I want you to understand, these are exactly the scriptures that they read and they recite in their mosque every Friday in every country on earth. Right. The Prophet Muhammad was asked whether it was permissible to attack infidels or unbelievers, such as you and I, at night with the probability of exposing their women and children to danger. Right. The Prophet replied, their women and children are from them. That means they can massacre them. I want the Americans to understand that was 1,400 years ago, his early followers had more decency than anything we have seen among the followers of today. The last but not least, Bukhari Hadith 5.516. When Allah's Apostle fought or read the people, we raised our voices shouting, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Dear listeners, Allahu Akbar was shouted by the mass murdering Muslim American force officer in Fort Hood, as well as by any and all Muslims, whether Iraqi, Pakistani, or Afghani, 
before butchering their unsuspecting and unarmed human prey. Right, Which including the men who were fed uh, meals before they killed them uh, recently uh, by their own trained, uh, is they said, talk about this blue on green massacres that are occurring. Well, it is sickening how the American military under Obama are using blue and green yeah. or blue over green. This yeah. is murder. Murder. This they want to have murder. a. They want to euphemize it so that. It is yeah. mass murder. Right, and, and they, by the way, they, these terms are used. The commander in chief who is allowing it. Well, he's a Sunni Muslim apologist at the very least, but I believe he's a Marxist, Satanist, Sunni Muslim. And his pur purposes are to destroy the world economy, to get rid of the nation states, and to put America eventually subject to Sharia law and Saudi Arabian hegemony. By the way, he's doing a fantastic job. Do you he know is. why he's doing a fantastic job? Because most Americans are apathetic. They're not even realizing that he is destroying the United States of America. It took over 200 years for the American government to amass $10 trillion in deficit. It took Obama four years to add 50%, five to six trillion dollars in four years. And yet many Americans are rooting for him. I don't want them to think of themselves as black or Jews or Christians or Hindus. I want them to think of themselves only as Americans. What they are leaving for their children and grandchildren is a legacy of disaster. Am I right or uh, am I wrong? Well, well, you're right in one way, but you're wrong in another. If Obama has his way and the globalists have their way, there won't be grandchildren. There won't be anybody. Oh, well, I mean, you have a scenario even more disastrous. Yeah, what I see is a darkness scenario. where the, the, the number of humanity will be under, as a George Guidestone's, 500 million. Well, what Obama is conspiring is a U.S. population under 20 million. Well, you know, he, he's, he's, he might achieve, achieve it. I mean, I, I would Oh, yeah, that's right. If he's, uh, when people think that can happen, yeah. He wants to build down the U.S. military strategic nuclear forces to 90%, so it'll be less than the current status of Pakistan or China. Well, he's definitely going to be less than China. Already yeah. the United States less than Pakistan. China, practically everything. Yeah. Less than you, Pakistan. You know, Less nuclear oh. weapons in Pakistan, and he wants to do it unilaterally. That's Obama's publicly stated position. Okay, what I don't understand is why are the American people silent? Why is Congress silent? If everybody has been bought, if everybody has been bought, then we lost the game. It's political correctness. You can't say anything against it because you're, you're, you're a racist if you say something against a black man who, have, by the way, he's acting more white than any black than any white man that has ever existed in American political history. He's a communist that's in the same cloth as Vladimir Lenin and Stalin. And he wants to destroy not only America, but he wants to completely wipe out, wipe out not only the middle class, but he wants to wipe out the nation states around the world using his means of printing money like crazy, promulgating wars, and destroying America's religious and Christian right. I think that although you uh, got here late, you're uh, doing very well at explaining uh, that there really isn't an, a, a, a kind of a, a, a micrometer of light in Islam. Now, people need to understand there's no such thing as a, as a, as a mild or we call it a, a peaceful Muslim because the scriptural readings are, the early Medina readings are exceeded by, by or, or uh, Mecca are exceeded by Medina, which are the violent ones. And uh, before he died, I think we had 29 jihads of Muhammad. And uh, as you say already, people need to actually realize that as soon as Islam even becomes a large minority in any country, Sharia law, uh, honor killings, etc., horrors happen in your country. And when they insert themselves, just like they do with the State Department, they believe in Maruna and Takia, they'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll murder, and the horrors that, that they will visit upon you. And yes, there's lots of other Satanists on the brand of, of Lucifer on earth, like the Sabbatean Jews and the high-level banksters, etc. But Islam is a perfect minion for hell. Well, Tell us all doing, about it. You do a very, very good job. In fact, you don't need me. Um, and what you're saying is so true. All I need, all I ask people to do is read the Quran. Don't buy it. Go on the internet. L look at it. Read it. 
the criminality, in fact, of the uh, uh, Muslims is not as bad as the criminality of the American and West, uh, the American and West left-leaning media. Their criminality is even greater, because for political correctness, they deliberately and maliciously deceive and mislead the American people by asserting that it is only a small minority of radical Muslims who are to blame. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Islam has no shades. Every believing Muhammadan Muslim is radical and extremist. There are no moderate believing Muslims. They cannot possibly exist because they have to abide by Sharia, which is racist, misogynist, hate-mongering, more-mongering, duplicitous, disloyal, vile, and is most definitely ungodly. Yeah. As despicable and appalling as this may sound, please be aware that each believing Muhammadan Muslim is a potential killing machine, primed to act as the slightest push from their mullahs or religious clerics. That is why the CARE does not want the American intelligence services or the police to monitor their mosques. Why would they? Why do, do they refuse to have that? Because what they teach in their mosque is exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Hating America. They cannot, they cannot abide by the American Constitution or any Constitution made by man. Why? Because not from Allah. It is yeah. impossible for them to accept it. They pretend when they are a minority, as you just said a few minutes ago, they pretend at the beginning. But when they are 10%, 11% of the population, they want to impose Sharia. And some of your judges should be put against the wall and shot dead yeah. for allowing Sharia. It is unconscionable what they are doing. Well, but what they are is most of these high-level high judges are high-level masons because most people don't realize there's more Masonic Muslims in the world than there is of every other religion, just like the Southern Baptists, and a ton of them are, are masons, and a ton of the so-called Knights of Columbus are masons. The very first question I ask when I ever enter a church, and I often, if I get asked to, to do a talk at a church, which, by the way, hasn't been for 12 and a half years, and I get waved off because we have a huge audience worldwide, the first question I ask is, if I get asked to church and I tell the pastors in advance, I said, I'm going to get your deacons board. They have to be in the front in the front row. I'm going to first going to ask them how many are belong to a secret order. And I make it broad because sometimes I try to be evasive. You know, do you belong to the knights or do you belong to this or that secret whatever secret order? And you find universally, they usually all do. Okay, the fact yeah. is in Muslims. The highest level, including all of the Muslim Brotherhood founded in London, not in the Middle East, 1928, are all high-level satanic masons. And it's not surprising that they're linked up with the Rothschilds. Mayor Amschel Bauer was his original name, and the so-called Star of David is a sign of Ashtarte, which is a sign of the spring human sacrifice war goddess that literally would accept the blood of children that were received in lascivious sex during a moon ceremony nine months earlier through lascivious sex that's the sign of israel which is a sign literally of abortion and a pagan sacrifice of human flesh that's the six-pointed star over israel that's what we're facing fantastic i never knew that you didn't know that the sign of Israel is the sign of Ashtarte, the spring pagan goddess of blood and human sacrifice and abortion. No, I didn't know that. First time I heard that. Amazing. Isn't that bizarre? Amazing. I've got to yeah. double check that one. <clears throat> You'll find it, Ashtarte, A-S-T-A-R-T-E. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know about Ashtarte. I know, but I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, you, uh, you know about Ashtarte being, the, the being a pagan thing. goddess, right? Yes, of course, okay. it was a goddess of the pagans. Right, and of course people don't realize these goddesses aren't just kind of like an archetype in their mind. They exist in hyperspace. They're real beings that accept human flesh sacrifice because they're high-level demonic entities in the realm of the fallen ones. Fantastic. Yeah, scary, isn't it? People say, oh, you're just delusional. Well, just look at the, the panoply of history. Look at Islam. Look at our government. We've got a Sunni Muslim apologist at the very least who is totally using Sunni Islam and backing Al-Qaeda terrorists, which we supposedly were against when we put them in Camp X-Ray, and we went and invaded two countries, Afghanistan and Iraq, Iraq 1 and 2, and now Afghanistan, at a cost of trillions of dollars that are bankrupt our country. 
And it's not surprising we had the collapse in 2008. It's not surprising we have a police state where they say we spend billions of dollars on fusion centers so we can monitor human beings in America so we have a database on every American citizen. You're a persona non grata, and that's why, surprisingly, 923 executive orders, including national defense authorization, so people like me can just disappear without habeas corpus because the president has said, if you irritate me just like the, the, you know, the, king, the queen of hearts and Alice in Wonderland, world off with their heads no habeas corpus go to prison or we execute you or torture you until you're you're thoroughly dead so where is congress in all this where are the congress American is complicit congress is I complicit really they understand. should be impeaching obama right now obama shouldn't be being reelected. and romney the mr bain capital maniac he's another fool he's going to back israel to do a preemptive nuclear attack where the most of the citizens in Israel will die from short range nuclear, from short range chemical, biological, and fuel air bombs, and the terrorism on the world will allow us to then move to the next stage. Now we'll be deploying sword robots. Do you know how many robots we had deployed in Iraq at the end of the Gulf War II? We started off with five or six. At the end of Gulf War II, we had over 12,000 operational battlefield robots. We're talking about like. 12,000? 12,000. And you know how many Predator drone robot uh, airplanes we are now are authorized to fly over American soil in 2012? With FAA authorized by executive order in the United States through Obama, 30,000 authorized right now to come back home to monitor Americans. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Yeah, and people say, oh, that won't happen, that won't happen. Let me tell you. We're looking at a very dark future. This is darker than any of your kids' video games. We're looking at a dark future where all these weapons they tested in the laboratory of Iraq and Afghanistan, they want to turn back on us because the real goal is to wipe out the nation states, to wipe out conservative Christianity and Judaism, the Judeo-Christian ethic, to use the satanic weapon of Islam to, to force a godless world on the whole population where the transhumanists can have a cybernetically and genetically enhanced life and the rest of us are dying of radiation illness uh, spreading plagues and shortened lifespans permanently caused by toxic exposure, inferior food and genetic engineering and no one can reproduce anymore unless you're licensed and your children are given to you in a laboratory. And people say no Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating you have a negative attitude. No I don't I'm a very positive person. I'm just being realistic. I know exactly where this is going. And they don't want to hear it because they don't want to hear the words of a prophet. They think, oh, you're just a prophet of doom. You've just got a bad attitude. No, we can avoid this. But we have to face Islam, we have to face the Sabbatean Jews, we have to face the selection. It's not an election, it's a selection by billionaire robots, puppets, with the sock puppet arm of George Soros up the backside of Obama and the sock puppet of the Mossad and the, and the globalist bankers up the, up the backside of Romney. That's what we're facing. We're facing two dueling devils with, uh, you know, like Don King, as we said, in the, in, you know, somebody asked him years ago, who's going to win the fight, you know, between George Foreman and Muhammad Ali? And he says, I'm going to win the fight. He said, well, you're not in the fight. He says, sure I am. I said, I got both fighters. Whoever wins, I win. He's right. And George, right, you know, right. no, and that's what we have question. with Satan. Yeah. I need to know from you, because you're very knowledgeable. What do you think should be done about Iran as we speak? Uh, very simple. You can make a phone call to, uh, to Ahmadinejad, to the Russian prime minister into China. You bring an international force. You neutralize the nuclear weapons and leave a force there to make sure they never develop nukes. You do the same thing with Syria. You remove the RDX and the high explosives. You go to Hezbollah and you totally castrate them from nuclear power, etc. You start screening every airport, every access point, and you make sure that no one from Muslim countries emigrates to America. You remove all mosques that teach Sharia law in America, and you warn them on a watch list that any Muslims that teach this will be expelled from the country. That's a start.